Surgical counting. What does it mean? It means counting of all the surgical instruments and all the surgical items and supplies used inside the wound to be sure and confirm it is complete and correct. So what is the aim of surgical counting? To prevent any retained items inside the patient and inside the wound to prevent any infection or sepsis after surgery for the patient which can cause harm to the patient and sometimes death who will do the surgical count this is one of the most important rules for the scrub nurse and circulate nurse so together they will do the surgical count and together they will confirm surgical count is complete and correct before closing the skin and before finishing the operation so what are the items i should count i need to count all the sponges the small one and the big one small one the right or four by four and the big one the uh, abdominal lab sharp instrument or sharp items like needles knife and sutures all the surgical instrument inside the trays and also the single instrument Miscellaneous items like uh, peanuts, like neuropathies. When to perform the surgical count? At least we'll do it three times in each surgery. The initial count and the middle or uh, during surgery count and the final count. The initial count will be done before the incision, before incision or before surgery. The middle count or the count during surgery, you can do it if you are going to discard or take some item out like gauzes finished and you need to take this out 10 pieces or when you are opening a new item, you see you need also to count and uh, if you are going to uh, do release or relieve to, to the scrub nurse when you are uh, changing the shift, so also you need to do count. If you are going to close the cavity within a cavity and sure the, you will do the final count before closing the skin at the end of surgery what are the principles of surgical count it should be done from in to out it means should be starting from the scrub nurse and then it will go to the circulate nurse scrub nurse should count first from her side then circulate nurse should count also from his side after the scrub nurse count should be done in loud voice should be written on whiteboard and should be obvious for all the surgical team only one circulate nurse should write on the board even there is two circulate nurse inside the room only one is allowed to write on the whiteboard immediately write any open item on the board use sponge counting bag or keep it in sheet on the floor in a way you can count easily so you can easily count the small goes four by four and the big goes is the abdominal lab what i should do in case of miscounting at the end of the surgery when they are start closing the skin so the scrub nurse and circulate nurse they will start doing the final count if the scrub nurse found it there is one goes or one item missing she need to inform the surgeon to stop closing the skin and they need to search to find this item scrub nurse will search on the trial field surgeon will search inside the cavity or inside the wound circulate nurse she will search around the room especially in the trash bin in case they search for 30 minutes and still it is not there they need to inform the charge nurse and they need to call for portable x-ray why portable x-ray not CR because it is more accurate and it will show big area in case the missing item not found after doing x-ray according to the policy surgeon he will take the responsibility to close the skin and he need to write in his notes there is one uh, item missing and also he need to inform the patient family for the circulate nurse she will mention on her file that count not correct and also she need to initiate over how to do the surgical count let's see this video 
Having a systematic and routine approach to counting will help you learn this skill and to perform it effectively and carefully. The accepted routine is to begin with sponges and then count sharps, miscellaneous items, and finally instruments. There should be no extra noise, distractions, or interruptions during the count. The count in and out may be initiated by either the circulating or the scrub nurse according to healthcare facility policy. Begin by placing the basins where they will be used. Handle instruments and supplies in an organized and systematic manner. Use the principles of effective body mechanics and economy of motion, moving items only when necessary. Ensure that your back table is neat and that you have a designated working space. Keeping your back table tidy helps to reduce the risk of error and potential injury to both the patient and perioperative team members. Aseptic principles include keeping your hands at waist level and avoiding the outer edges of the table. Use your surgical conscience to continually monitor for and address any breaks in aseptic technique. Keep items together in an area or basin until counted to prevent accidentally overlooking an item. Policies regarding the count procedure and the setup of the back table and surgical field differ between clinical sites, as do the names of instruments and items. For this reason, focus on the general strategies used by the scrub nurse to count or organize items. Items are counted in the groups that they are packaged by the manufacturer or the clinical site. Move the drapes from the working space. Place them in a basin or to one side of your table. Place the instrument set where it will be used and check that a sterilization indicator is present. The count begins with sponges. One, Take a group of laparotomy two, sponges in one hand. Three. Lay each sponge separately on the table. At five, keep the last sponge in your hand. Count the sponges back into one hand and hold by the radio opaque tags. Pull to check that all tags are secure. Place sponges where they will be used. The circulating nurse will need to clearly see each item counted and will document as the count proceeds. Count slowly so that the nurse can follow. Count the radio opaque gauze sponges next, using the same actions. One, two, three. Separate each sponge four, as you lay it on the table. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep the last sponge in your hand and count the sponges back into this hand. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Place the sponges in the appropriate basin or area. Different types of sponges should be separated so that they do not inadvertently become mixed together. Notice the blue stripe or radio opaque thread woven into the sponge. All items used during surgery must be radio opaque to facilitate location by radiography in the event of an incorrect count or loss of an item. Small sponges, such as peanuts, are counted next. One. The scrub nurse pops them up or two, indicates them so that the circulating nurse can three, visualize the sponge and the radio opaque strip. Four. After counting, five, place the sponges where they will be used. One, two, three, four, five. Count sharps next. Scalpel blades are placed into a safety container to prevent injury to the nurse or loss on the back table. Do not pick up or handle the blades to count them. Indicate each blade separately as you count. One, two. Following scalpel one, blades, two. count injection needles. All parts must be counted in. One, Two. One, two. Next, count the sutures. Pick up the suture packages and lay them out separately on the table. Indicate each package as you count it. Check packages carefully for the number of sutures. Some come in multiple packages containing two or more. If this is the case, open the package and display the needles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Multiple sutures must be clearly visible to the circulating nurse in order for the count to be accurate. Once counted, place the sutures in the area that they will be used from. The suture reel is counted next as one item. Next, count other small miscellaneous items. Display and count the ESU tip. Count the cleaning pad or scratch to avoid introduction into the wound as a foreign body. Instrument sets are commonly presented in two forms, on a stringer or holder and on pins. The set shown here has both a stringer and a pin section. Instruments are counted in a systematic manner by moving from one side to the other. Do not remove an instrument from the pan until it has been counted. We suggest sweeping across the table. Count slowly enough that the circulating nurse can clearly see the tips or identifying aspects of each instrument and can record the item. Start with any instruments that have been added. Clip of pliers, two. Moving to the pan next, name the instrument first and then count. In the pan, scissors, one, two, three. Suction tip. Some One, instruments, two, such as the pool abdominal suction tip, have multiple pieces. Show and count each piece separately. At conclusion of the surgery, you will need to count all parts out. Tissues. One. Items used two, for the initial incision and opening, three, such as tissue forceps and scissors, four. can be put directly onto the mayo tray. Never move instruments out of the pan until they have been counted. Scalpel handles, one, two. Balfour retractor. The Balfour is another example of a multi-piece instrument. One blade. One, two, three, four pieces. One, two, three screws. Kelly, one. Deaver, one. Malleable, one. Parker Mott's, two. After counting loose items, continue to work from one side to the other. State the name of the instrument first and then count each group in turn. Make sure that the circulating nurse counts and documents each instrument before moving on to the next. Organize the stringer so that you can manipulate instruments and the circulating nurse can see. As each instrument group is counted, move these instruments to the side. Towel clips, one, two. Sponge sticks, one, two. Needle drivers, one, two. Flowers, one, two. Cokers, one, two. Babcocks, one, two. Alice, one, two, three. Four. Males, one, two, three, four. Kelly's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. When all instruments are counted, remove the stringer to release the instruments. Depending on hospital policy, the stringer may be, may be counted and kept on the back table or passed off. When you have counted all items on the back table, 
notify the circulating nurse that the count in is complete so that she can continue on with other duties. Inspect all instruments for cleanliness and function. Remove any items that do not meet these criteria from the sterile setup, but ensure that they are not taken out of the operating room suite. Load the scalpel blades onto the handles using a needle driver. This is a critical safety step. Never use your fingers to place blades on scalpel handles. Serious injury may result. Put the loaded scalpel handle into the designated neutral zone container on the mayo tray. Place any other loaded scalpels in the needle counter box for protection. Next, select and place the instruments and equipment required for the initial stages of surgery onto the mayo tray. Prepare the tray as soon as possible after completing the count. Once you have assembled the instruments, place two lap sponges over the instruments, tucking the tags in to avoid tangling. Do not cover the neutral zone basin or area. Sharp items must always be visible to team members to avoid accidental injury. Place the assembled ESU and smoke evacuator tubing on top. Attach the ESU tip cleaner to the plastic isolator for the handpiece. Next, connect the suction handpiece to the tubing and put them on the mayo tray. If required, provide towel clips to attach these items to the drapes. Do not let items hang over the edge of the mayo tray. The tray should be neat and organized so that team members can access all items quickly, safely, and efficiently. When the mayo tray is ready, prepare items on your back table. Fold a gauze sponge into thirds and then in half. Load it onto a sponge forcep. Place it in the area of use. Next, load a peanut sponge onto a mayo or pean forcep, again placing it where it will be used. Load the suture that will be used first and rest it in a secure place. Load the staple appliers and place the staple bar where you will use it. Organize your drapes in the order that they will be used. Open the drapes and prepare to remove the tape strips when required. Once the back table, mayo tray and drapes are organized, you are ready to begin surgery. Each perioperative nursing patient is entitled to competent, safe and ethical care. The count procedure is an important enactment of patient caring and surgical conscience. You will have the opportunity to perform this skill during surgical procedures, beginning in a lab setting. We are confident that you will soon develop the skills and knowledge associated with the surgical count that your patients depend on you to provide.